MNI named lectures pay tribute to some of the great minds that have changed the face of neuroscience. Experts from across the globe are invited to give talks about important issues in neuroscience, medicine, and society. In 2006, the Francis L. McNaughton Lecture was given by an MNI alumni. Dr. Sergio Pena is known for his extensive work in neuromuscular research at the Neuro, but he is also renowned for his work in genetics at the Universidad Federal de Minas Gerais in his native Brazil. His research involves looking at human genetic diversity throughout the world, and he is one of many experts who claim that race is not a scientific truth. But he also goes one step further. Dr. Penna wants to replace the old idea of race with a new way of thinking about humankind. What he proposes is a model that is not only scientifically sound, but one that coincidentally undermines racism, xenophobia, and ethnic hate. From your studies and your findings, what have you deduced about race? There is no question uh, in my mind, or and I think the evidence uh, is overwhelming, that from a genetic or a biological standpoint, uh, races do not exist. They're just ways of dividing humanity that are convenient for social and political uh, uh, means. There used to be models of thinking on, of ways of dividing humanity. And the first was this, what we call the typological approach, that sees races as very fixed entities. That um, they are homogeneous inside and very different, very distant from each other. And this model really led to disaster, uh, led to the Nazism, uh, you know, this uh, National Socialism and the Holocaust. And also doctrines such as apartheid. So uh, uh, this is a bankrupt model and was replaced uh, soon after the Second World War by a model based on populations. And uh, even though the uh, model uh, based on populations was uh, very noble and the intentions were very good, very soon it, it, uh, population simply became sort of a synonym for race. I think the real revolution started, you know, in, in the early 70s. A series of discoveries were made in genetics that uh, showed that this population model and its consequences are not desirable. Number one, if you divide uh, the world into continental populations, which would be more or less roughly equivalent to, to what people used to call races, that uh, uh, 85% of the variability is within the groups and not between the groups, uh, which shows that the bulk of variability is actually from one person to the other and not from one population to the other. The second uh, thing is that uh, uh, we know now that mankind uh, arose very recently uh, once and in Africa and from there populated the rest of the world. So you cannot think of Europeans and Africans as two different groups of people because the Europeans are derived from Africans. There is a genealogical relationship between them. And the third one is the, uh, the way the, the human genome is structured. That's, it can get pretty technical. But uh, together these discoveries that we have made in modern genetics show that uh, we are individuals. We are much different from each other than we previously thought, but we are also very close to each other. We are very similar right. in a way. 99.9% uh, .9 of our genome is identical. Uh, and that the variation that we have is shared among all populations on Earth. When we talk about human rights, human rights are individual. And also when a physician sees, sees a patient in his office, he's seen an individual. He's not seen a group. Yeah. And so I think that population thinking is not really that useful. And uh, uh, I feel that it's time to replace it with a model in which you don't have uh, the, the persons, uh, the six billion individuals in the world, are not structured in races, they're not structured in populations, but they are simply structured as six billion individuals. And each one is different from each other, and each one has his own 
genetic uh, uh, identity and his own environmental identity, which is the life history. And you have a, a whole new respect uh, for the individual. And uh, then concepts, concepts such as race, they just vanish in thin air. We seem to be getting these conflicting messages. One is, you know, there's this evidence that um, race, as we know it, doesn't really, there's, there's no scientific basis. But at the same time, studies continue to come out where they do group people um, well, um, racially. The scientists, they have to uh, let go of prejudices and, uh, you know, previous ways of thinking. Because if the questions are, are, are formulated uh, with, uh, uh, with population thinking or with racial thinking, the answers will come with population thinking, within the framework of population thinking and racial thinking. You know. Even uh, some of the large studies of, of, uh, of uh, worldwide variation that have been done recently, even though the models of analysis were assumption-free, not the model of uh, sample collecting. You know, the sample collecting were done uh, on a population basis, and then the answers come, uh, w w you know, which are based on populations. If we were to switch to an individual uh, person, uh, a way of seeing individuals and not groups, it would not be necessarily uh, well received because it would challenge a lot of uh, uh, interest groups, and, uh, including the pharmaceutical industry that discovered now a new cash cow with this. Uh, 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 race-targeted drugs. But say for, for doctors who are looking for um, easy indicators of susceptibilities. To there are no easy indicators. They are using the wrong indicators of susceptibility. If they, if they use uh, so-called race, uh, quote-unquote, or, or population. But um, if you switch model, then you're, li you're left with no indicators of susceptibility. Then you have to take, you know, uh, each case has uh, on its own uh, merits and uh, the, the genetic knowledge necessary to build individual profiles is not in place already, but I think it will soon be and I think we'll be able to do it in a very efficient way. You don't construct your identity in a monodimensional way, you construct it as a, uh, in a multifaceted way, you know, in, it has several uh, dimensions to it. And so this model actually really uh, uh, concentrates in the individual and gives him absolute freedom to, to construct his identity without imposing any overarching, you know, uh, 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 manner of doing so. And, uh, that's what I like about it. A full-length version of Dr. Sergio Pena's lecture, entitled The Evolution and Worldwide Distribution of Human Genetic Diversity, can be viewed from the MNI podcast webpage. For more information about the Montreal Neurological Institute, visit our website at mni.mcgill.ca. Thanks for watching.